to our Gospel Diaries. I'm in the great city of Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm excited to bring you some fresh content. See Pastor Alvin Coleman of the Mighty Sons of Glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, sir. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good, man. Bless you. Are you a native? I am a native of Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, yes, we have about five months of hot, but this is the best time of year. Right now. Right now. <laughs> what month we was the day? It's this November. November. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. all the way to May, we good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to live nowhere else. Yeah. I, you know, one would think, you know, what do gospel music really have a place here in, on the West Coast, here in Phoenix, Arizona? And uh, I was. You know, I stumbled across, I'm like, Lord have mercy, Pastor Alvin Coleman lives right here in Phoenix, Arizona, which I should have known, but it was a treat knowing that I relocated here as someone of your caliber uh, that has traveled extensively throughout this country, bringing the, the gospel news through Quartet Gospel Music. So I'm like, let's, let's delve into your gospel diary. Uh, Phoenix, always been, uh, it's been a hard city. Uh, to sing in. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the national groups wouldn't even stop here. Really? No, they wouldn't even stop here. Uh, uh, with just a few of them that was from coast to coast uh, back in my day with gospel keynotes and Jackson Southern Airs uh, was pretty much the only real two groups mm -hmm. that would even stop in Phoenix. Jackson Southern Airs stopped here in Phoenix. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The quartet scene was pretty good years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I was coming up, I got attracted to it by my brother. And uh, we had uh, about five or six good groups here in Phoenix, Arizona. They were supported very well uh, back in the day. But it has, if you want to talk about fast forward to now, uh, it's almost non existent. Right, right. Even before it's quartet uh, singing here in. Uh, in uh, Phoenix. Well, years ago, if you're talking about quartet singing in the blacks, because that's what I did. Okay. Coming up, it's it's sung in the in, in the uh, in, in the uh, uh, black churches here in Phoenix, Arizona, and most of the Baptist churches, uh, the uh, the Kojic churches wouldn't. They didn't take the quartet singing very well. And we're talking seventies. You talking seventies? Okay. You know, you talking seventies? Uh, it was about two or three of them that we would sing in, but mostly uh, the Baptist churches that we sang in in Arizona. And it wasn't but probably four or five churches you could even sing in. Mm -hmm. Introducing this music to the Phoenix area. Well, if we had a DJ, uh, Fred Larkins. Really? Okay. Fred, Fred Larkins, uh, Ruby Soul Stewart. Okay. She, uh, she, she, she was a one of the promoters back then. Those were probably the two top promoters. Then we had Bo and Betty Stewart. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're living up in Richmond, uh, California now. Uh, but they were here bringing in Shirley Caesar and people like that. They was bringing them in. So those are probably the three top promoters back in the day is uh, Bo and Betty Stewart and uh, uh, Ruby Stewart and uh, Fred Larkins. Mm -hmm. Church till about, uh, I say, 14. 14, okay. 14. Uh, I want to go back into my, you know, coming up with my dad. I lost my mother when I was three, so I never knew a mom. But my dad, you know, I left home at 12 years old and uh, to, live, to live with my sister until she uh, got me up to about 15. And then I went on the road mm -hmm. singing mm -hmm. with a group out of Los Angeles, the Western Harmonies. I went to Los Angeles and I toured with them uh, for a couple of tours. And then I came back. I formed a couple of groups of my own. Really? Uh, Young Voices of Truth, and we were singing, and then I sung with, after we sung a while, then I played in probably every group that ever come up in Phoenix, mm -hmm. you know, during my time, you know, with some names of faith, the Phoenix All Stars, the Sensational Soul. I've sung with all of them. You call them the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We sung with all of them, and, uh, and that's how I ran into the Mighty Sons of Glory when they come to town. Mm -hmm. Singing, mm -hmm. it was coming from a quartet convention, mm -hmm. and they stopped in, and we opened up the program for them, mm -hmm. and uh, they needed another singer. Mm -hmm. You know, they need a baritone singer, and say we want to go professional. And uh, you know, what do you think? I say, well, I want to go professional too. So we say, well, we'll call you in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Two weeks, they was back down here. We rehearsal, we hit the road. Well, you know, you know, you talked about that Art Testimony album. Mm -hmm. Okay, that album was was already out, and uh, they gave me that album and say, learn these songs. And uh, and so I took the album, and by the time they came back, and we rehearsed for about a week, 
you know, but I already had learned the song that we were going to be singing. So, and so it didn't take us long to get, get going. So, and then the and, and, and rest is history. platforms that was really prestigious. Uh, did some TV appearances, but before we get all into the uh, to all your accolades with the group, let's talk about uh, the formation of the group. Let's talk about the Mighty Sons of, uh, of Glory. Started in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. uh, Luther Shepard. Luther uh, Shepard. Shep Shepard was right. with them. They, uh, they, they, you're talking about the two brothers, Cal Hawkins, Timothy Hawkins, and uh, Tommy Liggins. Uh, they're all they're the, the Hawkins brothers and the cousin. And uh, they're from Cincinnati. Okay. Okay, they're from Cincinnati. Uh, but Cal's Hawkins and uh, uh, Tim Hawkins was living in California. Mm -hmm. And Tommy came from Cincinnati, formed the group. You know, he was the one that formed the group. Oh, and then Marvin Morris. Marvin Morris is like a brother to Cal's Hawkins. Mm -hmm. uh, his father's son with the Melody Kings in Los Angeles and uh, 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 Timmy and, and, uh, and, and Kyle's mothers, they had a little group they sung, so that's where they got they singing from, from, oh, from their mothers. Okay. And so they, they sung around California with all the groups and talent shows and stuff in California while I was singing here. Mm -hmm. I was singing here. You was getting so prepared, I preparing was, yourself. Well, you know, uh, I was singing here, and uh, like I said, they came um, from a quartet convention. Mm -hmm. They weren't perfect, going professional, but they came from a quartet convention, and they came here and they sung. And they said, we need a baritone singer because one of the other singers wasn't going on. They wanted to go professional, and the other one couldn't go, so they picked me up. Mm -hmm. And the, and the group was formed in LA. Okay. That's why it's the Sons of Glory, Mighty Sons were from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So that's where the group was formed. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, but they from Cincinnati. Okay, okay. You know. So. Are you familiar with uh, Pastor Calvin Bernard Rowan? Yeah. I believe that he did some time with the uh, with group. the son. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was one of the starters. Yeah, okay. he, was, he was with them. <laughs> uh, uh, I seen him. I just met him. We did a 45th anniversary mm -hmm. in L.A. And uh, I think Tommy called him up. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah. So okay. yeah, I, I met him. Okay. In the van, we the Texas was first. What? Yeah. We, That's about we, what? We, well, you know, you have to go a long ways from here to get somewhere. Yeah. So we, we did uh, Abilene. Abilene, Texas. Abilene, Sweetwater. Uh, down through there when we uh, when we first left here mm -hmm. from Phoenix. Mm -hmm. That's that's the first show that I think I did with them. I, I the racial tension that I that I had was with the Western Harmoniers uh, because I was like 15. Okay. You know, and I was with some older guys and I was just playing bass guitar. Mm -hmm. Well, for them, and my brother was playing lead guitar, and uh, we got stopped one time at a, 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 a gas station, and we had the, uh, the, the officers gave us a hard time. I remember that, uh, but that was like late seventies. That was like late seventies. But I didn't. I don't know of no encounter really <laughs> with the uh, with the sons. We saw a little prejudice up in Boston, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, a little bit up wow. there, you know, checking in hotels and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. But uh, not that I can just really say it was just really the bad on us. Okay. So let's talk about you recording with the group. What was the first album that you recorded with the group? The Battlefield album. The Battlefield. If I'm not mistaken, is that 81? That's on Jewel. That's 80. That's 80? Yeah, that's, okay. a, that's on Jewel label. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the one with the black cover. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. And you recorded, you went into the studios in L.A.? We did the studio, we did, uh, we did, we did some of it in L.A. and some of it in uh, Louisiana. Really? I think we did it in L.A. and mixed it in Louisiana at Jewel Records. Yeah. Because, um, you know, the, the White Gordon was producing, mm -hmm. you know, with the Clouds, yeah. and with the Williams Brothers. Mm -hmm. 
you know, he's gone now, but he did a lot of the songs of Blur producing. Cliff, did you have any backlash here in Phoenix? You know, you're joining a group. Were you, weren't, were you in the ministry? First? Let's ask no. you that. So you weren't no, in the ministry? I wasn't in church. Okay, but was there any challenges uh, that you had to face uh, singing with a recording group being from Phoenix? Well, the challenges I faced mostly was with my family. Really? Uh, they thought I should have been staying in school. <laughs> because I'd left school okay. and uh, quartet was my heart, you know, I mean, that was my dream. And uh, I left, I walked out of school, 10th grade. 10th grade? 10th grade, I walked out. You I know what you wanted to do. That's it. So as soon as I got an opportunity to go with anybody, I'm gone. Because mm -hmm. it was in me, that's what I wanted to do. So, and you know, my family, you know, they, you know, got all the up in the air about that, but they wouldn't take care of me anyway, so. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, it was just wide open for me to go, mm -hmm. you know. So that's the road I took, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it got me on the road in the 80s mm -hmm. with the Sons of Glory, and we, you know, it, all the way through the 80s, and you know, there's some, some, some other things happened after that. Yeah. <laughs> with the mighty clouds of Joe. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Joe and yeah, Joe, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, I got many stories about him. You know, I got lots of stories about him. He's a good, genuine guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a good guy. He helped us a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, he helped us as much as he could. You know, um, um, he always talked and said good things about us. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, I spent a lot of time, you know, off stage with him. Mm -hmm. You know, we did a lot of social stuff together. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. A lot of social stuff. Was he a comical person? He's, he's crazy. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> he's crazy. He, he's a, he's he, he just a good. He's a good, good-hearted guy. You know, you can't beat it. He told us, you know, that we was we was gonna do the Gospel Workshop of America. We had joined, you know, James Cleveland Gospel yeah. Workshop of America, and so we were supposed we was, we was to perform at Madison Square Garden, and uh, and you know, he, he he just made a crack at us. He said, all you gotta do is is, is drive that house. Mm -hmm. You know, get you a good drive. Mm -hmm. It just drive. Mm -hmm. He said, you have everybody in that dance. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't gonna say what he really said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't gonna say what he really said, but, but you know, mm -hmm. he's. I'm not gonna go and say what he really said, but we we did a couple of anniversary tours with them. Anniversary tours? Oh yeah, we was open act for them. How long was the tour? Well, they were dates actually. Okay, okay. Uh, we did like a week, uh, and then we was opening up act. You know, for them, uh, they took us on a couple of tours with them. If you look on YouTube today, I mean, you all are racking up some nice numbers on your all's uh, older music. So yeah. you all are still finding new audience here today. Yeah, it's it's, uh, but you never had the signature hit mm -hmm. that 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 people recognize you. Mm -hmm. They always knew in the '80s that the stage performance, mm -hmm. we made it on stage performance, mm -hmm. and and that's what when we. Uh, about two years after being on the road, uh, our manager was Tim Hawkins, mm -hmm. guitar player, the songwriter. Uh, he took us far as he could take us, and he went and uh, got Leon Polk, mm -hmm. the, the, the ex baritone singer for the Mighty Clouds. Mm -hmm. That's when we start to get on all the major shows, mm -hmm. and, uh, and people got a chance to see who we were mm -hmm. because Leon was already known. Mm -hmm from the mighty clouds of joy and he knew all the promoters, the promoters liked him. Mm -hmm. So they let us on all these shows, mm -hmm. you know, because of him. But once we got on and went around one time, mm -hmm. then we start to get on on our own mm -hmm. because of the uh, live performance. Mm -hmm. Even when uh, there was one time that uh, the mighty clouds had said, you know, that we don't, we're not going to sing on the shows with them. You know, because of the, yeah, the problem yeah, I was telling you about and Big Jam says no. Mm -hmm. He says, no, they're going to sing. Mm -hmm. You don't want to come, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So when you bump it up against the, the top quartet group in the world, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and then the promoter says, no, they're going to sing. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming. And you don't have to come. Yeah. Then that, that said something good about us mm -hmm. in New York. You know, it was really, you know, uh, it was a good group in New York. Mm -hmm. you know, people like us in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, you know, with, Keith Wonderboy then with little boys and I talked to his dad and he was little boys and you know uh, McFadden and them, they was a lot younger than we were. They, they used to tell us the stories about we used to come to New York and how they was on front row jumping up 
and down while we were singing. It, <laughs> it made us feel kind of good when they, you know, when they came up and became, you know, major artists. Mm -hmm. You know, but the, they used to tell us the story when they were 13, 14 years old, watching us. Mm -hmm. Gave them inspiration mm -hmm. to become, you know, quartet singers. Mm -hmm. You know, Keith Wonderboy, you know, uh, Dale, uh, all those people, man. It just, you, 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 we had good people to say good things about us. Mm -hmm. But uh, and you say, well, I'm a national group. No, the national group from New York to LA. You know, and that's where we were going. We was on the road eight, nine months a year. Groups don't never do that now. You know, I mean, we leave we leave Los Angeles three month tours at a time. We come home for two weeks, we back out there. We come home for a month, we back out there. Day after day after day, you know, spend a lot of time on the road. That's the way we did it. You don't do it that way anymore. So how will you ever take care of your your responsibilities at home? Well, you know, you 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 couldn't take care of me because you weren't making no money. You had to, you know, you had to stay out there, you know, and you weren't really making any money. So a lot of guys, you know, lost their wives and lost their families, you know, for the music, mm -hmm. you know. You've uh, seen that happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen guys go home, you know, uh, but, you know, to stay on the road, that's like we were doing it. Because we was over in Los Angeles, so and I'm over here in Phoenix, so we go out that way. We couldn't afford to keep coming back and forth. Right, right. And all of the music, all of the music with that was south in the east. Mm -hmm. You know, when you wanted to be somebody, you had to get go out, go out that way. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we stayed out there in, in uh, uh, three months at a time, three month tours mm -hmm. at a time. And probably what probably wasn't singing, but sometimes three times a week. Mm -hmm. You know, so we had to survive them other days. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sometimes four times a week. You know, uh, you know, and then we rehearse in the other days and get somewhere, and, you know. But no, you can't maintain a family now. You can maintain a family, and especially in the first three, four, like three years, mm -hmm. you weren't really making no money. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when you start making money, it wasn't it wasn't enough for you to, you know. Because there's a lot of people in the group too. There's a lot of people yeah. to be paid. Yeah, it, it wasn't enough to take care of, to send mm -hmm. home and take care of family. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, it, it, you had to fight for a hit record, mm -hmm. you know, but it wasn't enough for us. What kept you going, knowing this as a reality? Well, you going, you, you keep you going, just like anybody else. You, you waiting on that hit. You, you sang it. Simple as that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You record. You have to keep recording, keep uh -huh. recording, keep recording. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of things go into it. You know, it's a lot of things go into it. You make some bad decisions. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, the group was caught up in a family situation and you know and, and sometimes decisions uh was made that didn't favor the, you know the group mm -hmm. you know but they were made you know personal reasons mm -hmm. made you know so uh it's a lot to go into it mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, it's a lot of opportunities that we had we probably missed mm -hmm. did you ever did the group ever talk about relocating was that ever they did they relocated to Charlotte. Really? I uh, was just a, thinking about it. We had a house. Too. Had a house in Charlotte where the group, you know, we, 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 we knew they coming back and forth from LA was it was gonna be it's a, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the group did try to relocate to Charlotte and uh, pretty much uh, work out of Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And I think they did for a while. I think I wasn't with them when they did that. Um, at the end of the 80s, right at 90, mm -hmm. is when I, had my break. Three, two, preaching, preaching. You, well, you never left. Know, you never right. left the. You never left music ministry. You did. You left the quartet music ministry because I lived. I, I left uh, uh, after leaving them. I had a a, a setback because of uh, a drug addiction. Yeah. Let's I, talk about it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. It's a drug addiction uh, that, that that separated me. Wow. You know, um, crack, cocaine, wow. drug addiction. Wow. And I'm glad to say it because <laughs> because when you have been delivered, uh -huh. you can talk about okay. it. Okay. You're not ashamed of it. You can put it on a billboard. Yeah. Then when you done really been delivered. Right, right, right. So, uh, so that's what really uh, took me out in the '90s. You know, so I spent the decade of the 90s, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in drug addiction. Uh, and uh, until the Lord delivered me, mm -hmm. you know, in the late 90s, I had thought he delivered me. And now I've been clean for, I've been 
drug free 25 years. Were you using while you were on the road? Yes, wow. definitely. Now, how did you feel singing at these dates, knowing that you had this addiction? Drugs didn't care wow. how you feel. Okay. Drugs don't care how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't feel you didn't feel nothing. You just did what you did. Did you have any conviction? Though? When you did, you feel like the singing kind of was a lifeline in a, in a sense. No, I battled. I battled, but uh, but like you said in the early days, something was instilled in me and my father. I had enough instilled in me that I would only go so far with 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 with, with, with drugs and singing. Mm -hmm. I never would, I never performed high, mm -hmm. never. Okay. But afterwards, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I love you afterwards, yeah. all the time. Yeah. But I never, I never have done that. I can, I can do this. I've never performed. I've never done drugs and then go perform. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I always waited until it was done. Mm -hmm. But I did uh, start on the road where, where I got uh, heavy addicted, mm -hmm. uh, along with a lot of us. Yes. You know, uh, it was a, it was a, in the 80s, I mean, it was drug addiction. I mean, it went through groups like wildfire. There was a lot that was going on in the 80s. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, but uh, I was one that got caught up with it, mm -hmm. you know, and it separated me from the sons for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, did they, you, did you, was you mad at God? Did you feel no. that God put you? How do you feel, what do you think caused it? I don't know. Um, I, I can't really put a, Put up into what caused it. I was already in a fast lane. Gotcha. Uh, I was already in a fast lane. Uh, I didn't have a lot of church under my belt in my teenage years. Yeah. You know, I had it as younger, but not in my teenage years. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of church. You know, I wasn't living uh, a, a godly life. Mm -hmm. You know, I was uh, mostly a street person. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all doing doing my teenage years. Mm -hmm. You know, and then right on into singing. You know, so I was really in the fast lane. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, most of my teenage life, mm -hmm. you know, and then when the singing came, you know, I'm still in the fast lane, mm -hmm. you know, and then it just, it happened, mm -hmm. you know, um, got with some people and tried some things and, you know, kept trying it and kept trying it and one day it hooked me, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then just, you know, I can't really explain why, I, you know, this, it was a popular thing to do at the time. Mm -hmm. Not crack, but just the cocaine. Period. In the '80s, it was popular. Uh, you know, it was a, it was expensive, and it was a high. When you did that, it's like you was, you know, on another level. You know, you was, you know, you was in the in crowd. You was, you know, it's one of them things. You know, but uh, I slipped off into smoking it, and uh, it took me out. Wow. I mean, it took me literally out. I think it's definitely been a gift to my life uh, because. The, the Bible says, you know, your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. And I think that's what that's what my gift did, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I think a certain anointing have to be on you to, to survive, to make it through certain storms. Uh, I think. Wait, wait that, say that again. Say yeah, yeah. A certain please. anointing has to be on you to make it through certain storms because there are some storms will take you out mm -hmm. if there wasn't a certain anointing on you. You know, I moved to Memphis uh, for 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. And that's where I really, that's when I really started to, 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 to go into ministry. the ministry. I was at G.E. Patterson's for 10 years, you know, and I was singing the Mel Chorus. Okay, so I was the lead singing the Mel Chorus for there, and uh, I was the, one of the main lead singers mm -hmm. on Men's Day, on the big days. She would always put me up to sing. And everybody's waiting on me to sing every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So it brought, it, you know, your gift made room. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's what made room for me mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and then that's when I uh, when I uh, accepted my call into the ministry. Mm -hmm. So I started being a minister mm -hmm. there at that church. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I announced my ministry with G. Patterson, you know. And uh, he gave me a lot of good advice and sent me to school. And, you know, with the, uh, with the college there in Memphis. Mm -hmm. I only went three months. Okay. It's me in school. But you went. <laughs> I wish I was trying to get my license. So, but what I'm saying is I've never been a good, I've never been a good student in school. Right, right, right. Because like I told you, I dropped out. Mm -hmm. 
10th grade. So I moved you now. Yeah. <laughs> I, so that, it's, this has nothing to do with education. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, see, that's the biggest mm-hmm. favor. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with education. There's some things that happen in your life. It has nothing to do with how much money you got, what your name is, you know, none of that. It's favor. Favor. When God favors you, mm-hmm. you know, then this is all this is. Mm-hmm. It, it's just, it's favor. There's no way I could have thought I would be here. Mm-hmm. It's no way. Mm-hmm. You know, for where I was, you know, back in those days. And you had a heavy call on your life because, like, you're pastoring. If you went through whatever you went through and now you're pastoring, now you see why you went through. Because yeah. whatever that was, it was really trying to take you away from your position today. Because people can walk in, you know, way where people can walk right in this church, and, you know, and something that you can say. You know, they can, God can sit right here and God give you what they need to hear to make it another day. So yeah. God has given you a heavy charge. You know what? I'm working on a message right now. I think the, uh, the, uh, uh, the purpose is in the pain. You know, I mean, that's, you know, uh, you know, and if, 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 if you don't got a lot of pain, then your perfect your, your purpose is not going to be much. You know, that's why when people are going through things, you don't give up on them. You don't, you know, uh, say there'll never be nothing, you know, because you don't know what their God is setting them up for. And the most struggle that you have may be just the higher the calling, you know. And uh, I never should have made it out of what I made it out of. Never. Many times I should have been gone. Many times I, I should have never got here. But I didn't know this would ever happen. Never, never that I dreamed that I'd be pastor of a church. When, when God ordains something, mm-hmm. then it's, it's not really things. He, you know, he He makes things happen, you know. And sometimes now I feel inadequate, you know, uh, as a preacher, as a pastor. You know, uh, do I really know what I'm doing? <laughs> you know, do why am I here? You know, you struggle sometimes, you know. And then when you start looking back and start seeing where you come from and seeing where you are. You know, he says, wow, maybe I am supposed to be here, you know. You have humanized your story. That's when you talk to pastors, gospel artists, or anyone that's under the gospel belt, you know, they tend to wear this uniform and they dehumanize themselves. But you have shared your real issues. What, there's a scripture in the Bible that say that we, we overcome by the words of our testimonies, yeah. right? You know, and, and you the share blood of the by the blood of the word of our exactly. I mean, there is experiences and we don't want to share them. But I think that once we reach the apex of maturity, you know, that it's time to share it because we didn't go through it for ourselves or to keep it within ourselves because whatever it is that we went through, there's something in there. There's an ingredient that someone that's going to come into your life, they need that. And I tell you, uh, Every chance I get, I get to, I get to tell that, you know, uh, a lot of my messages, uh, it end up, you know, you get to tell that, you know, and I thank God give it to us. What you go through is not for you, it's for somebody else, because somebody else need to hear, you know, that in, especially in times like this, people need to hear out of all that's going on in the world today, that God is still on the throne, he's still deliverer, he's still, he's still bringing people out, you know, someone may have a, uh, addicted child that you think that never will come out that's not true you know God just maybe the purpose maybe in all that pain the purpose that God has for that person mm-hmm. because right now God has to bring some people from out there to deal mm-hmm. to show that he's still healing he's still delivering mm-hmm. because I could never be out there now mm-hmm. that's some stories gonna come from out there now mm-hmm. you know that fits what's going on out there now. Right, right. I can only go so far, mm-hmm. you know, and, and make it fit. But now it's fentanyl and all that stuff out there that I had nothing to do with. Right, right. But somebody's got to come in here and tell how God delivered me off of fentanyl. Uh-huh. You know, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and he's going to do it. You see, what? you see what I'm saying? So you you have to, you know, and not give up on people. Yeah. I'm just thankful for what I've been through. Mm-hmm. I can say that now. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it then. Mm-hmm. But you know, I mean, and I'm, I'm just telling you what you can stand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know all of the, the the days on the road and all of the nights on the road in different cities that you that you don't know anything about. You don't know anything about how you walk the streets and how how I've done things. You know, I mean, and, 
you make it back. And some days I didn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. But something pulled me back. Mm -hmm. Some days I was out, some nights I was out and say, let the group just go. Mm -hmm. You know, let them go. And, and, you know, and I, I don't want to do it no more. You know, I want to stay over here and, and, and no man's land, you know, and then God always said, no, 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 you come on. He carried me a lot of times, you know, uh, while I seen others that didn't, didn't get carried. Some of the same guys in a lot of the groups, you know, uh, and I'm not missing nobody's name. Right. Right? They have their own testimonies, mm -hmm. but uh, we were, we were, it, it was, it was like wildfire out there in the 80s, man. It was, you know, it was bad. You know, we were hurt. I mean, it was bad. And uh, we were part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was part of it. You know, I was part of the addiction. And God delivered me and brought me out of it. And here I am. You know, so, so Quintet, I still love it. Mm -hmm. I still, every once in a while, I used to sing with my brother and him around here. We do a little something every now and then. But uh, uh, my main thing now is God's people. Wow, and the address to this church, this is New Genesis. Genesis. Church got great? No. <laughs> no denomination. New Genesis Center of Praise Ministry. Ministry, so what is non denomination? No. The church it's Pentecostal. Okay, okay. I was, you know, I was weird. It, it, it's, it's, it's Pentecostal. Okay. It's Pentecostal. Okay. So we believe it's the evidence of speaking in tongues. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, it's, we're Pentecostal. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, we're a Pentecostal church. Right, so you, you teach holiness. That's right. That's right. That's right. So that's the, the only way you're going to survive. What's the, what the Bible saying? What does it say? Blessed is the man that sitteth not in the council, council of the young God. God. Now, last but not least, <laughs> Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones. You oh met Bobby God, Jones Bobby. in the 80s. Yes. Talk about going to the Bobby Jones gospel show. Well, it was a trip. <laughs> it was a trip. Dealing with Bobby, it, it not a trip there with Bobby. Bobby was good, you know. Um, you know, I don't, I don't talk about people. You know, I try to keep it, you know, like clean. Right, right. But um, Bobby, uh, it was, it was a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was a good opportunity. We was treated very well uh, at Bobby Jones, uh, very well. Uh, he called us back twice, so we was treated very well. It was just a good experience. We loved it, you know. Uh, just like all the rest of the groups that go, go there and, and perform. Uh, uh, his musicians jump behind us and, you know, uh, he had a little Caucasian boy back there playing with us. And, 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 I mean, it was just, it was just fun. Gene Patterson's church in, in Memphis, you know, when we sang with the Mill Chorus, I got a lot of videos on that, you know, stuff like that. But this is ministry now, pastoring now, you know, uh, singing is, you know, yeah, yeah. I have to sing sometimes when you walk into the mm -hmm. house, it's dead. Mm -hmm. You have to bring them up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to use what God gave you. So it's just just another tool, yeah. you know, to get the gospel over, yeah. you know. And so I use it for that, you know. But uh, for it's just quartet singing and every once in a while I have fun with it. Mm -hmm. Now it's just like just do and have fun with it. You know, it's, it's no big deal. You know, anything else you want to say? I just want to say, I just, you know, thank God for you, you know, and hope that, you know, that this uh, interview that go out and bless somebody, yes. you know, that know God is still a healer, a deliverer. Mm -hmm. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you need to get to know Him. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the best thing that ever happened to me, mm -hmm. and I'm sure He'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. God bless you. God bless you. As I always say, love on someone and you will change a life. Bye.